Glock 17 Generation 2 Police Trade-In Edition. Let's take a closer look at this gun. All right, Glock 17, this is a Generation 2, and this is also an LE trade-in. Uh, one of the benefits to getting into one of these firearms is, uh, one, number one is price. Uh, you can get into these firearms for very, very cheap, uh, and you can rebuild them for even cheaper, and you will be back to having a brand new firearm that you can trust your life to, uh, and it's a Glock. So, um, yeah, I want to apologize up front in my tabletop review, I say... 1987 to 1988 it's actually till 97 um, so this uh, firearm is an older one but it has all the the new internal upgrades and we're going to discuss that right now in the tabletop so stay tuned all right so here we go we are back here at the tabletop and um, I'm not going to go over you know the size dimensions trigger pull all that stuff uh, just mainly because well, it's a Glock 17 and there's tons of other videos out there that's going to bore you with education as far as what the Glock 17 has to offer I'm not going to do that today but today what we are going to talk about is considering this is a police trade-in that's basically what the review is going to be about not necessarily particularly to the Glock uh, 17 in general um, as an all-around firearm but police trade-ins and uh, mainly what to expect out of a police trade-in and why you might want to consider uh, adopting one of these pistols into your uh, into your collection um, so today what we are looking at this one here is uh, Glock 17 this is a Gen 2 chambered in 9 millimeter as you can see there is no rail here under the dust cover no uh, finger grooves here on the front of the grip and um, as you can see this one here it's it's worn okay um, as you look at the barrel um, it has what is as we all refer to as the Glock smile on the barrel okay now generally speaking uh, most police trade-ins uh, will have external wear because they were holstered and carried more than they were actually shot this gun here it's been shot um, but it's not necessarily a bad thing and I'll explain a little bit more once we get into history on why that barrel is worn the way that it is um, so on a quick note uh, if you are looking at a possibility at getting a uh, a Gen 2 I want to uh, just kind of give you some insight on the Gen 2 so this particular one here um, I've done some research before the video this particular one here is actually manufactured somewhere between the time of 1986 and 1987 um, and how we know that is uh, the milling here on the slide is squared the extractor is squared into it also guns clear we'll take this thing down um, back here 
you have the short rails versus the full extended uh, rails like in the the newer ones um, but this one has all the upgraded parts in it because they are not black so that's one way to tell if you have uh, one from 86 to 97 um, is basically you will have the short rails but it will be black now you'll know if it went through the upgrade if you have the short rails like this but all the internals are a uh, like a chrome molly uh, including the firing pin and uh, the firing pin block safety as well um, as long as these are all nickel you're good to go if they are not also uh, the recoil spring will not be a captive recoil spring like such it'll actually be a set two separate pieces um, if you if you buy one and it's uh, got the old black pieces in there and a two-piece recoil spring just send it on in the Glock and uh, they will they will upgrade it uh, for free um, just call them and tell them what's going on and just tell them you just want to send it in for some service they'll replace those parts out now you will not get the old parts back um, so that's something to keep in mind when you do send it in. Uh, so now that that's out of the way, basically this gun is, like I said, the frame and the slide, uh, I've narrowed it down somewhere between 1986 and 1987. Um, when this gun was purchased, uh, it was very, very clean, but it was very dehydrated. Uh, so I don't know if it's a law enforcement thing that they just don't oil them or if it was just this one sample of the guy just didn't oil it but um that's where the glock smile came into place on this one because i personally have glocks as you guys know i probably bore you with some of the videos uh, because you know they are just glocks but uh i have not experienced a glock smile on mine uh ever since i've been firing glocks and using frog loops so I believe the wear marks are from uh, not being oiled. Um, now, let's see what came in the box. So we'll set this off to the side. This is what came in the box. Now, this big fun stick, uh, I want to say that this was more than likely bought separately from the second owner of this, because I don't know if I mentioned it, but it was a police trade-in. It was bought by a particular individual that my buddy bought it off of. I think this was added, uh, but this is cool because it actually is a, has a plus three base plate on it. So it converts this 31 round magazine into a 33 round mag. But here's the, the magazines. And generally speaking, a police trade-in, there's gonna be at least three magazines in the box. Now, these ones here, as you can see, um, these two on the on the right there, those are government and law, law enforcement only. These were, these were manufactured back during the Clinton ban. Um, this is a newer mag, and as you can tell, it has the Gen 4 dual cuts on it, because you can change your, your magazine button over, and these do not. Um, now, these, these magazines are perfectly fine. Um, yeah, they work just great so that's what you're going to expect when you get generally you're going to get three magazines so that's that's a bargain okay so um, now in the box um, I actually gave him a brush and a rod just out of one of my old boxes here because if you don't know the Glock needs to use that nylon brush but here's the old recoil spring um, and it's how I know it's been through the upgrade because this is the spring that came in it um, I highly advise him to replace the recoil spring out just because we know it's been shot. Um, here's the old sights. And as you can tell by looking at those, they are worn. Uh, a little bit of rustiness going on on that. Uh, a lot of yellowing going on. It's probably not going to pick up too much in the, in the actual camera here. But some yellowing going on. Now they work just fine. You know, you line your sights up and I mean there's nothing wrong with them. But I went ahead and since I had some old sites laying around from uh, some site job changes, uh, I actually replaced him out with uh, some uh, sites that I had laying around. Now here's the funny part. These are for a Glock 43 slash 42. 
they, uh, they fit in the picture frame here in the back is the exact same the only dimension that's different is you know side to side it don't go the full length of the slide but um, it'll get him through until uh, he can actually get some uh, some real sights put on this thing um, so let's take this thing apart and let's look at some of the internals on it so I'm gonna make sure the gun's safe dry fire okay recoil spring the new one I'll keep this back here keep that up there and get it mixed up a um, couple of things has changed uh, now I polished the whole front of his breech face here just to help ensure some reliability um, but as you can see you got some wear marks going on um, nothing nothing out of the, the normal though there's nothing you know that looks dangerous or anything like that it's just basically been shot it's worn in uh, there's nothing wrong with that same thing in here you can see it's been it's worn in a little bit uh, there again nothing wrong with that so one of the good things about this gun is literally he's got 250 into this I mean literally this is what he's got wrapped up into this Glock um, and basically his buddy said well just give me what I got into it and that was 250 so I don't know if that's 250 including this or, or how it worked but he's literally got 250 wrapped up into this gun now why should you possibly think about a police trade-in well price um, you can get them for next to nothing he bought the recoil spring off of eBay brand it's a brand new spring I think it costs 11 bucks so if you're really worried because it's a used gun well it's a Glock so I mean you could buy a new recoil spring and if you wanted put a new firing pin spring in there uh, and for under 15 bucks or so you virtually have a brand new firearm um, you know except for the wear marks which I'll be honest with you um, I, I wouldn't change a thing about it as far as the wear and the holster marks and everything like that the only thing I would do since you guys know me very well the only thing I would do is I would either I would probably towel and grip this and the other areas that were open uh, I would probably uh, do a, a, a stippling job on the remaining frame because it is super slippery um, and I don't like that part of it but I'll tell you what the Gen 2 it really really fits the hand well uh, I didn't think I'd like it as much but um, I, I really like this a lot and uh, I just noticed that you can see the marks in there where the the holes this thing's the one of these magazines has been in there for a very very long time um, but anyway um, yeah the, the 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 gen twos man i mean i really like not having them finger grooves now i've adapted to it but it just it really really fits very very well so um that's basically it that's all i'm really going to talk about and uh, i highly suggest that you do some research and you know i i try to explain this to people that are on a budget that are looking for a really good firearm um one you know layaway take advantage of layaway plans um two you know you got a uh, police trade-ins that you can uh, you know think about getting into and then also sometimes on the used market uh, sometimes you can go into just a regular store and they might have some trade-ins that somebody you know gave up an old gun so they could get a new gun um, so there's options out there for you guys that are you know on a budget that's looking you know to get a really really good firearm um, and this is a prime example of that although it might not look really really pretty as you're going to see from the range footage that this gun does what it's supposed to do uh, and, that, and that is go bang every time and reliably so uh, enough with the the talking let's uh, let's go ahead and head on out to the range and uh, just see what we can't do with this thing all right I want to thank you guys for uh, subscribing to my channel and all my new subscribers uh, I do appreciate it, and if you've gotten this far and you like the content that you've seen, um, please hit that thumbs up. Um, it's a way that uh, you guys can help put money back into the channel without donating any money. Uh, just hit that like button and subscribe and share, and uh, my ammo can is getting low. So uh, I do appreciate it, and uh, hope you enjoy the shooting.
the Glock 17 Generation 2, the police trade-in. Um, you know, it did what it's supposed to do. Um, like I was saying in my tabletop and, uh, uh, you know, in the intro and stuff, this is a this is a good way for you guys to get into uh, a really good gun. Rather, it's the the Glock and uh, 9mm or the 40 or 45. Uh, even some of the, the older Smith & Wessons that they have. You might even luck out and get an m and um, But this is a great way for you guys to uh, really get into uh, a really good firearm. And although she might be a little uh, rough around the edges, uh, that don't take away from the fact that it still performs the way that it's supposed to. Sorry. But, um, yeah, anyway, so... You know, this is a good way for you to get into it, and, uh, you know, you can rebuild it for next to nothing. So, once again, guys, I appreciate everything you guys do to keep this channel going, and it's a real simple way. Just pound that like button, subscribe, share, add to favorites, anything you can do to try to push these videos. It really, really does help to keep the channel going. I would not be able to do it without your guys' support. So, once again, I want to encourage you to be performance-driven in life and demand greatness. Thanks for watching.